Okay, so the modeling paste is dry, and I went ahead and just coated the bottom with some black chalk paint. Um, what I typically use is Waverly chalk paint. I actually prefer the chalk paint to gesso. I think it has a more matte finish than gesso typically does. Sometimes, um, most of the time, gesso has a sheen to it. And what I'm going to do now is just cover the remaining sides of the box with my black paint. And I just use a sponge to dab it. So what I'm going to do is get one real good coat on here on all sides and the top. And then I will move on to figuring out what type of decorations or embellishments that I want to add to the box. Okay, you guys get the idea. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I have my embellishments picked out. Uh, what I'm going to do, this is the front of the box and this is the top of the box. They are not all glued down. None of them are at this point and I am going to have to do them in layers um, just to make sure that everything gets covered in my primer really well. And you'll see I was moving it around a little bit and it kind of scratched some of the paint off. But that's okay because I'm going to be putting several coats more on there anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my heavy body. Oh, I got the lid off already. My heavy body gloss gel. That's what I use for adhesive, and we'll just get these elements stuck on here. I'm just going to show you guys a little bit because I don't think you really need to see the entire process. Any part that I think you would need to see, I will turn it back on and record for you. I'm just trying to make sure it's where I want it to be. Alright, that's close enough. And I'm just using a popsicle stick to put my gel on my embellishments. And these are actually resin pieces that I've put into my mold, my different molds that I have. Um, some are Prima, some are not. Some I just got from Amazon. And these resin pieces are pretty lightweight. So unless it's like a bigger piece, you don't really have to use a lot of gel on it. 
just enough for good adhesion. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of these glued down before I need to let it dry and then apply my black chalk paint again, and I'll be back. Hi, guys. Okay, what I've done is I've got my embellishments on the lid to my box here, and I've put the primary base coat of black chalk paint down, and then I glued my secondary embellishments on here, and now what I'm going to do is put another coat of black paint on there just to make sure everything is good and primered. Uh, I did get everything on the sides of my box. I'm trying to show you guys where you can see. And then what I'll do too is go back in and just hit these resin embellishments one more time just to make sure that they're good and primered before I start coloring the box. And I'll probably put another coat on the bottom as well just to make sure that everything is good and primered. So I'm going to spare you guys that because it's just applying black paint and really you're not missing anything. So I'll be back as soon as I've got everything taken care of. Okay, you guys, I've got black primer all on the box. Um, I have black primer on the lid and I'm still waiting for this to dry a little bit. Um, but for the bottom, I wanted to try this technique out. I haven't, I've seen it done and it ends up looking beautiful, but I've never tried it myself. So what we're going to do, I have some wax. I have some Indian pink. And then I'm going to use, you can't see it because it's got paint on it, but I'm going to use um, Firebird. I'm trying to focus in on it. There it goes. Firebird. Um, that is a gorgeous color combination. So we're going to see what happens here. And I'm just going to put the wax that's in my tube. I'm just going to put some out on a paper plate. I have a little container of it, but unfortunately I forgot to dig it out while I was in my drawer. And for my camera setup, I have to leave it where it is. So I'm going to start out by just, this is, they're not too stiff, but they are somewhat stiff. And I'm just dipping into my wax. <clears throat> And we'll start applying the wax. And since I'm going to be doing a couple of different colors, I'm just going to go randomly throughout here because I do want them to mix. I don't know how well the letters are going to do, but we'll find out. I think I'm going to move to some pink now so that I can continue to hold the stencil. And we'll just move down as we go. I 
thinking the letters might not show up as good. Okay, so I'm going to get this finished and then I'll turn the camera back on uh, right before I'm finished and then I'll pull a stencil off and we'll look at it. Okay, so I've got this finished here. Just closing my wax up here for a minute. Well, I guess I don't have to because I can go ahead and start doing the sides. Um, Let's lift this up and see what we've got. Oh, nice. Okay. So, yeah, that worked out pretty good then. I am pretty pleased with that. Let me give you guys a closer look. I love these two colors together. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. So, that's the bottom then. I'm going to leave this to dry. It takes about 15-20 minutes for it to dry completely and become permanent. And then we'll start putting color on the rest of the box. I just wanted to show you guys this really quickly. This is what it looks like with natural light hitting it. And oh my gosh. Look at that. And look at that. I mean, you can still see the texture in there because when I did the bottom, since it was just a flat surface, I used a sponge for my paint, which gives it a little bit of texture and the wax just picks that up beautifully. All right, guys, so what we're going to do now is start coloring the main sides of the box here. We have the bottom done, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, this is the front of the box, and I'm going to be using the same waxes, the Indian Pink and the Firebird, which are just really pretty. Uh, I'm going to start off with the Firebird. And I'm just using a light hand with this. I don't want like total coverage because I still want the black to come through. And I'm using two different brushes, one for the pink and one for the Firebird. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth here. And I haven't really decided yet. Um, I might do some of this peacock color on my main elements. I haven't really decided that yet. So I'm just going to get the background colored first and then I'll go from there. And then to get inside of here, um, going to use a little brush that I use with my waxes. And as I switch back and forth, I just kind of try to blend them together a little bit. These waxes blend really beautifully. They're so creamy and yummy to work with. I just absolutely love them.
Now you can really see on this square all the texture there. I don't really have any set pattern. I'm just kind of moving and going according, you know, to what looks good or feels good to me here. Okay, I'm just holding it so I can see it in the light a little bit, a little bit better. Now I'm just going to move to my little brush. I'm actually going to stand up to do this so that I can see and make sure it's... I don't want to get this too bright in here because it is background. Okay. Now, I'm just going to take my finger Gorgeous. <clears throat> Probably end up taking the little brush and going around that just to get the heart a little better. This is the first time that I've used this rectangular frame. I bought the resin molds a while back and I just haven't 
got around to putting them on a piece yet, but I really like it. Oh, this is so satisfying. And I just rub my finger off a little bit. And I'm actually going to take the brush. It's the same brush that I use for the inside. I'm just rubbing it off on my paper towel a little bit. And then I went right into the peacock. And I'm just going to lightly go around this heart here just so that I can get it as much as possible. There. I like that. I'm just going to hit these wings a little bit more. Just go around here just a little bit more just to give it a little extra vibrancy. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? Well, it looks like I might have uh, had some contaminants on my brush there. Let's see. There we go. Alrighty. So I'm going to move on and do these other sides. And then I'll record the top when we do that. Okay, so there's the top of the box. And I did get all four sides done. And then again, there's the bottom. So we're going to do the top now. And I'm going to try to keep it in the camera just as much as I can. Um, we'll see here. Move that way a little bit. Try to get it centered for you guys. And I'm going to start off with my small brush down in these crevices. I'm going to have to kind of tilt it a little bit so that I can see. I'm just kind of going back and forth with my pink and my gold like I did on the other sides. Okay, so now I'm going to take, and again, I'm, you know, using the Firebird, the Indian pink, and then. For all the embellishments up here, I'll use the peacock. 
but I'm going to go around the edge here and I put the lid on the box because I want it to um, go from edge to edge. just go back and forth with my Firebird and my Indian Pink. Sun's kind of going in and out. Let me go over here and turn a light on. Hopefully that helps you guys to see a little bit better. Here, I'll move it back. <clears throat> And as you'll see, as I'm doing it, I am kind of getting some of the color just like I did on the other embellishments. But that's okay because it's going to all blend in together anyway and look pretty. So I'm not really too worried about the colors getting on there too much. And you can just kind of go back and forth and blend until you're happy. Okay, I think that looks good. Let me get the front of the box there. Maybe a little bit more here. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to color in these embellishments. And I am going to use the little brush for it just to try to not get it on the background as much as possible. See, I already did, because I'm messy. I 
And what I did too, when I went and put my embellishments down, I took some of the gel medium that I use for my glue and I just tapped it over some of the smoother embellishments like the buttons uh, and the glass, the little glass jar here just to give it more added texture. And you can always go back and just go around with your background colors. <clears throat> Make sure that's in camera for you guys. Yeah, you guys can see pretty good. And see it just, that little bit of added gel on there just gives it that much more texture and interest. I'll just kind of move the box around as I'm doing it just to make sure that everything looks good from all angles just to make sure that I have everything covered good And I'm just getting, I don't know if you guys can see it or not here, there are these, the edges of these gears in here, and the edges of the buttons. I just like to try to make sure I get all of my side edges covered really good. I don't get too heavy handed around the face of the moon just to make sure that those facial features are brought out. I did add a little extra texture to the moon 
with, I mean, the paint will do it too when you add your primer. Uh, again, I use black chalk paint as opposed to gesso. Not that I have anything against gesso, it's just simply what I prefer. Just want to make sure it's completely in the frame for you guys. Okay. So we're almost done with this. I think what I'm going to do now, just on the top, I'm going to leave this for probably about a half an hour or so just to make sure that the wax is completely dry and then I'm going to come back in with some of my microbeads. I'm probably going to use silver and mix it with some of my gel medium and just do a few dabs here and there just to give it some additional interest. So I will be back with you in just a few minutes. Okay, <clears throat> so now that this is dry, I'm going to take some of my gloss gel and I'm just going to get a little bit out with a popsicle stick and just put it on my paper plate. I'm not going to do a whole lot, just a little here and there. And then I'm going to take these micro beads that I have and I'm going to use the silver and I'm going to take, if I can find one, 
just a little brush. I'm going to make, let's see if I can show you guys here. I'm going to make like a little indention, little hole in my gel there. And I'm going to pour some microbeads in there. And they kind of get everywhere, but when I mix it up, I tilt it and they all run to where I want them to be. I like doing it this way as opposed to putting the gel directly on your piece and then sprinkling them on because to me this kind of elite well it does sometimes alleviate all the micro beads just going everywhere So now that I've got that mixed up, what I'm going to do is just sporadically put some down on the canvas, just in random places, just to create some added interest. it doesn't have to be any specific way it's whatever makes you happy I try to work somewhat fast when I'm doing this because the gel can start to harden if you do take too long. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are finished now. I've got all the microbeads on there sporadically. Get it a little bit closer here so you guys can see. It just gives it that little bit of added interest. I don't do it on all my projects, but I do it on a lot just because I like the way it looks I guess it's kind of a signature style that I have and that's it there's our box all dry and complete I think it turned out nice I'm very pleased with it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the creative process and I'll see you in the next video.